Hi guys, this is Rashid and welcome back. For today is about a project that many robot developers want to do once in their life and that is self-balancing robot. There are tons of projects like this in YouTube and good resources everywhere. Most of them are using DC motors or stepper motors with an MPU 6050 IMU. So I would like to make something more different in both hardware and software. So my concept here is, it's not only doing self-balance, but when it lays down, I would like to drive it as a normal car. So I think it's better to call it wheelies robot, meaning it could drive horizontally like a normal car, but then we could accelerate it to lift the front wheel up and it just keep going like that. Simply speaking, it's like a normal mobile robot, but it can also do wheelies. I think this would be another fun project. So if you are ready, let's get started. For the robot base platform, here is the brushless wheel hub motor with an in-wheel encoder. And I'm using 30 by 30 millimeter aluminum frames. And there are two caster milling in front, so the cart could flip over and still could continue driving. So this motor comes with this motor driver, set LAC 8015D. And I'm going to use RS4S5 for the communication port. The ESP32 dev kit board is a good candidate for this application because I'm planning to use the Wi-Fi as well. For the IMU sensor, I'm going to use this BNO055 breakout board from Adafruit. There are two versions of this. You will need to be careful on the SCL and SDA lines of these two because the pin was swapped. We need this TTL to RS4S5 converter in order to control the motor driver by microcontroller. Here I have made an ESP32 Arduino library which calls that LAC 8015D and there is a connection diagram which pin to which one. So we just need to install it under Arduino and libraries and that's it. At first, I start everything from the breadboard like this and here is the DC-DC regulator which is going to convert 24 volt from the blue battery to stable 5 volt. The max 4S5 A and B pins are connected to this long wire to the motor driver IS4F5 pins. On the Arduino sketch, we can try checking on example code, just going down to set LAC 8015D and select set get RPM example. Basically, you will need to import Modbus master library and this library and define these pins as shown in here and making a pre-transmission and post-transmission function that is required by the Modbus master library. Serial 0 or the USB will be used to see the printing status. Serial 1 is used for the Modbus communication. Then we call begin function and pass ID number and serial 1 object to it. On driver, we pass node pointer into it, so this library can set and get register value. So once it boots up, we may to do this step all the times. First, disable motor, set mode, enable motor, and then set acceleration and deceleration times. Inside the loop, we're going to send two set of speed at fast and slow in every 5 seconds, and we're going to read RPM feedback of each wheels immediately. After you uploaded the sketch and restart, you could see the wheel start spinning and you could notice that the RPM feedback is also matched with the hour sending command. Next, I would like to drive this motor by using RC transmitter. Then on ESP32, I need to hook up with this SBUS UART converter and the RC receiver on the board. On the sketch, I need to include driver UART library and define the SBUS and UART parameters as here. So the SBUS signal will be handled on UR2 on another thread as UR2RX tax, so that we could get the real-time data from SBUS without interrupting the main loop. And I made this function called channel mixing. It's going to mix the stick value of throttle and steering in SBUS value and output RPM to the left and right wheels. So this is pretty basic math for a differential drive robot. You can find this from all over the internet. 
and this is another thread to handle incoming of its bus signal and the value of each channel will be stored on this global variable ch and on top of the main loop we will copy the value from ch to its bus ch then channel mixing will take channel 1 and channel 2 to calculate the RPM. Then that RPM will be fed into driver.setRPM. And also we could try to read the feedback after that immediately. Let's compile and then upload it to the ESP32. My left stick up down here is for throttle and right stick left right is for steering. As you can see, when I push the throttle stick, both wheels are spinning in forward or reverse direction proportionally to the stick position. And the right stick here is a steering to make the robot turns, so we can mix this throttle and steering together for curving motion. For the orientation sensor, I'm going to use Adafruit BNO055 library, and here's how to define and set up the sensor. On the main loop, we just need sensor event and pass it to the get event. Then we could read the orientation out from the event orientation x, y, or z. In my case, I need to use orientation.z for the pitch angle. And if you check on the plotter, you can see that the sensor is pretty responsive with less noise and drifting. On the robot, we need to tune up the PID gains to make it balance. So we need to know the current gains and then update those value. And I think the effective way to do that is to use Wi-Fi and web sockets. Then let's make another sketch to test this tuning mechanism. So I need to include Wi-Fi and web socket server and Arduino JSON libraries. We could install this by going to manage libraries and search on web socket server and is the one from Marcus Sattler and Arduino JSON by Benoit Blanchon. We define a JSON static document as docs.tx and docs.rx and this is the SSID and passwords for the Wi-Fi and the WebSocket server as WSS on port 80 and the initial PID gain are like this. On the setup, we use Wi-Fi soft AP with the SSID and password, and then we will get the IP of the ASP32. Then we begin the WebSocket server, and we put the event as WebSocket event. So this function is defined up here, and it was from the example of WebSocket server libraries. So this is like an event trigger when client connect to the server or message coming, then what you're going to do with it. And basically, I would just need to send the current PID back to the client. And when server receive new PID, I would like to update that and send back to the client again. And I made this Python script for the WebSocket client. And this client will connect to the server with this IP. On the main thread, I will start WebSocket app with the server IP and define the event listener like when it connects or message coming or close. And also there is another thread as sender worker to send back a JSON string of new PID gain. So I will just need to type P, I, or D with the new gain value and then send back to the ESP32. Also when server send back the updated PID to client, I will update it here so both sides could get the latest values. Now I'm going to connect to ESP32 Wi-Fi and start the WebSocket client. Then now we could start to send new PID value one by one like this. So the new value will also update on ESP32 and client also got a confirmation message back. Most of the function seems to work fine, so I think it's time to make a proper design. I started with drawing the schematic for all of my components. The IMU here is the black one I showed to you before. I'm going to use XT30 for 5V power input and JST connector for IS Voice 5AB. Then we could convert that to PCB and we could start making routes. The 3D view of this looks good, so we could now make the real one. Then I go to PCB way and select the PCB dimensions, quantities, 
and color. Then just click calculate to see the estimate. Then just upload the Gerbil file and wait for the review. And it will arrive at your front door with fast and secure. The actual PCB quality looks as good as the design with all the detail I wanted. So if you want to have a fast prototype PCB or 3D printing or even CNC parts, please check out on PCBWay for your next project. After settling, here is my board looks like. The ESP32 is plugged on top with the IMU on bottom. Beside is the TTL to RS-485 converter board and the XT30 and JST connectors are just what I needed. Then everything will be fit tight onto this white plate with screws and this plate is attached to the robot base frame so it won't be flying away when the robot is moving. Next, we just need to put everything together in one sketch, upload the file and trying to tune in on the real robot. So I define this switch as the mode change. So on the middle, I can control this robot manually. So I can drive this as a normal car. And when switched to hold, I will set everything to stop. And when it comes to auto, the robot will start doing balance when the pitch angle is in threshold of the starting PAD control. Now it's in auto and I will make the pitch angle closer to the upright position then you could see the PAD control starts working. Then next process we just need to start WebSocket Client Python and tuning up the PAD gains. This step is quite time consuming, you need to adjust it little by little, one gain at a time, and observe the balancing behavior. A few moments later. And that's for today's videos. I hope you guys like it. I believe some part of my video here might be useful for you guys somehow. If so, there is a super thanks button where you can throw the colorful S to me. 
The ZLAC A015D libraries is an open source and free to use. Please check out the GitHub repository in the description below. The full code of this wheelies robot is available for the YouTube channel member of the Isakaya plan. So if you like to have an insight of how I made the robot and more of discussion, so you can join to my YouTube channel membership. If you like this kind of video, please don't forget to press like and share button. These little things can help my channel growing up and expand to other people. So thank you for watching and see you soon.